Hello, folks. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. So, I'm back after a short break. Sort of uh, had a few health problems, nothing serious, don't worry. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better now. And uh, my, if I have a cough or a splutter, it'll just be my summertime sort of asthma, hay fever, cough. I'm fine now. So it's nice to be feeling a bit more normal again. And uh, of course, in, in May we had the uh, we had the Dam Busters, we had the Queen King's coronation, and we had uh, the uh, historic talk about the Dam Busters as well, which I hope you enjoyed, which I, uh, I I really found interesting to make. Now. We're back with a model review, and as you can see, it's the Dornier 335A file or arrow uh, and the Kubelwagen Type 82 twin set. Now, Tamiya, this is a 2023 latest release, I'm sure it'll say on it. Uh, however, neither kit is actually new tooled. But what Tamiya have done, um, there seems to be an issue, doesn't there, with quite a lot of the big manufacturers this year, in that, and this is true of Airfix as well, very much so. <coughs> um, there's been um, a bit of a dearth of new big announcements. Not sure whether that's costs or, or availability or, or staffing or I'm sure there's many, many reasons, you know, budgetary reasons. But I think they've been very, very clever here, Tammy, because they, they've got one or two really excellent kits and they've done this bundling together where they put, so you can make a diorama, they've put in a couple of figures and a vehicle and released them with 23 kits. <laughs> So uh, now the thing about this kit, I've chosen this one. There's four to choose from. You've got the the Kawasaki Hain aircraft from the late war uh, Japanese aircraft, uh, which comes with this little um, like a little uh, I would say um, it's like a jeep type of uh, small utility vehicle. Then you've got this one, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Then you've got the Messerschmitt BF109 G6. Um, and that comes with the same, that's the only thing that sort of lets them down because they didn't do four completely different ones. That also has the, the Kubelwagen Type 82 in the set, but um, I made this kit, I've got it right behind me, I'll talk about that again more in a minute, I'll show you when it's finished. Uh, I built it and really enjoyed it. So you've got the Messerschmitt, you've got this, both with the Kubelwagen, or you've got the P51D Mustang which comes with the Willis Jeep. So you've got four kits there that they've brought out. Now I've focused on this one and got this one. Uh, I've actually had it for a, ooh, a week now. And I just haven't got around to filming it. But um, I've never had a Dornier 335. And based on Tamiya's other 48 scale aircraft kits, I think we know it's going to be pretty good, you know. And it's quite a decent size. Now price-wise, I'm going to talk UK English Earth Pounds here, but um, it's probably similar in places like uh, America, but in dollars. So you get a real bargain actually when you buy these kits because normally to get your hands on one, well this one's actually been out of um, production and hard to get hold of actually, but if you buy the uh, the BF109 G6, it'll set you back around about £35 mark, you can get it cheaper, some be dearer, averaging about £35-£36. Well for £40 you get this set as well with these figures and this vehicle. So. There's no way you could buy that kit uh, separately. I think it's about £16 to buy the kit separately. So you're saving well over £10. It's a bargain, to be honest. Um, so there we go. So we're going to have a look at it. We're going to have a look at the finished version. Before we get cracking, though, in my, you'll notice everything's back to normal. I've got my traditional jacket back on. Back from the dry cleaners. No, it's not really. It's not, been, it's not dirty. It never gets used apart from for your viewing pleasure. But we're going to have some wine tonight as well. So what have we got? We've got, so I haven't got the bottle with me, I uh, left it in the room. But it is the uh, Maipo Valley Chile, from Chile, I should say. Getting pronunciation right. Um, I should get a Chile flag. But by the way, going diversifying here, digressing. We've got some more flags because, uh, <laughs> ah, now don't get hooked on this because I can't, I can't have every flag in the world. It's impossible. But I've got some more. I've added... What have we added? We've added the, don't you see, the Dutch flag is in the background. Actually, it's hiding behind the Union flag. I'll just move the Union flag for a second for you. So, our friends in Holland, oh, I can't really see it if I do that. Our friends in Holland won't be upset. So, we've got George and many others of you that come from Holland that watch the channel. Um, so, that's a nod to you. And we've got the Irish flag, the tricolour flag of Ireland. Um, 
Jeff Flood, he'll stop complaining now, and others. <laughs> and we've also got, uh, we have, is it Peter Dennis Nielsen, who um, is from, is from uh, Denmark, and we've got the Danish flag as well. And there are, there are others will appear and disappear over time. Uh, and we'll have ne next, I think the next video is going to be all about the Ukrainian flag, but more on that later. <clears throat> so, try to be as inclusive as possible. I should get a Chile flag, because I'm having Chile wine today. So it, this is the Cabernet Sauvignon from Sainsbury's. It's nothing fancy, this one. Uh, it's the Maipo Valley 2021, I think it is. And I have to say, it is really, it's under £10. It's fantastic wine, really nice, actually. Oh, yes. A glass of that a day will keep the doctor away. Or will it? Maybe not. Some of us know better. Anyway, we have got one, one friend of the channel, David. I won't go into anybody's details or anything, but David's not been feeling too well. So, David, I know you're watching. I hope you enjoy this one. Interesting. Just try not to, know you're not feeling too great, but maybe just have a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, hope that makes you feel better. Now, let's get into this. So, <clears throat> what do you think of this? So, first of all, we've got some brilliant artwork. Now, look at this aircraft. It's a particularly interesting one, isn't it? This is the, the Dornier. It was actually developed late in 1944 and did actually appear in 45, but not actually in combat that we know of. Now it's got this brilliant, uh, it's basically, basically got the front end of um, a Fokker Wolf 190 uh, Dora, if you like, with the, it's the Yumo engine, I think, isn't it? And we'll get into that in a minute. And then it's got um, basically another one at the rear, which is mid engined here. Most unusual push you, pull me arrangement. So, this is quite one of the Nazis' better ideas uh, in terms of aircraft design. Instead of chasing off after all this technology that they couldn't sustain, this used all the existing things they already had, the engines, etc., into a, a design that was very aerodynamic, uh, and it could top, uh, I think it topped something like 520 miles per hour. It was really fast. It was really fast. There's a true story about this aircraft, as I say, it never actually entered combat that we know of. <clears throat> but somewhere over Germany, I think, I think it was March 45, they were clearly being um, tested. And a French, free French pilot in the Royal Air Force, who was flying a Hawker Tempest, which was the latest fighter at the time. You know, Britain came out late in 44 and Britain's fastest fighter by far. And uh, this Hawker Temper saw this aircraft because he later actually drew a picture of it, which turned out to be dead, dead accurate. And he said, yeah, I'm sure it had an engine at the front and the back. And they're all saying, oh, you can imagine your superior said, what are you talking about? You've been drinking, monsieur. No, no, no. And he drew it and, and it turned out to be an accurate drawing. But he said that he came up on it and um, he, uh, th this pilot of the Dornier must have seen him and went to full throttle. And he went to full throttle. Uh, and this Dornier just left this Tempest for dead. It was just gone, you know. Um, absolutely left it uh, standing, quite frankly. And you just saw it disappear into the distance. Not quite the Millennium Falcon, but not far off. <laughs> you know, jumping into hyperspace, but it, it was gone. So it's a good job they didn't have too many of these. And it's a good job they didn't get them out in 1944 ready for combat. Because I think this would have done a lot of damage, especially to the bomber streams. You know, the Mustangs, I think, would have struggled against this one. Uh, it's a very interesting play. Anyway, we'll get into that. So, let's have a look at the model. So, zoom in a bit, and you can, uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in the background. Sounds like one of my neighbours has got his, he's got his streamer out or something, so apologies for any noise. Let's have a look. So, it is model number, the new model number, is 25206, and then it has a second number, 4700, 48 scale. Comes with a Kerbal Wagon Type 82, of course. And yeah, it's uh, it's quite a nice, a nice, nice setup. And it says here, as distinctive front and rear propeller, cross cross shaped tail and swept wing, realistic rendering of the cockpit detail interior, simple boxy Kubel wagon and two oh three figures. I thought there was only two. There are three figures: pilot and the two with the Kubel wagon. Very very good. Excellent. Thumbs up for that. On the side, we've got this um, sort of. Uh, uh, profile view uh, of the side of the aircraft. You can see this remarkable tail design where it's got this, uh, the rudders, pretty sure the rudders are top and bottom, so it's got a lot of rudder on it. So you can imagine it's quite a renewable plane actually, despite being quite bulky and large. 
Uh, and I think that gives it, it's got a lot of control surface and you see this, the shape of it there. And it does look like a jet aircraft of the sort of 50s, doesn't it? The actual pl plan view. Interesting. And then over on this side, uh, I'm not quite sure why they show it almost in the same way. Just show the, the colour call outs there. Uh, and very similar. So, let's get this open. Now, as I always say with these Tamiya kits, uh, I have not opened any of the bags yet, but I have removed the staples because otherwise we'd be here all night trying to remove staples. I mean, what a pain that can be. So, so we've got, so we got a sprue with wings, we've got a separate sprue for Kugelwagen, another sprue, clear part sprue, tail sprue, not sure what that is. It must be a weight because it's heavy. And then we've got a couple more, and then all the gubbins at the bottom. Oh, and there's a, I'm guessing there's a a nice colour call out sheet as well. So, just move the box away for a second so it doesn't distract. And I probably will have to rearrange this so uh, when we start looking at the parts I'm going to have to cover up those flags I think otherwise they're going to get in the way. Now I'm going to swap to my slightly more zoomy glasses, if you'll excuse me. Um, I always worry about putting these on, on, on TV. They're nice glasses, very good oakly ones, but they always look a bit slanted to me. It makes them look a bit like Jeremy Corbyn, the failed uh, uh, left-wing Labour politician. And that's not a good look, I can assure you. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. <clears throat> so, we'll stick all our plastic on one side here. We'll get into all the paperwork to see what they're going to offer us here. So, oh, we've got them. Yep, two separate bags for the decals, two separate instructions. So you're basically just getting two kits, really, aren't you? Which is great. Two paint guides, I don't think we need Protect it, that's a bit, you know, basic stuff then. Let us have a look first of all at our destructions. I'll zoom you in if you can find the control. Covered it in spruce. Can't really see you very well now. <laughs> right, here we go. So, in typical Tamiya fashion, it's a black and white, uh, sort of an, uh, I was going to say A5, but it's actually slightly bigger than A5. They're strange, uh, unique sizes. And you can see here straight away, can't you, this, this look of the Focke Wolf 190 door at the front, on the nose front end of it all. Very interesting. Um, and a typical sort of Tamiya finish model, which is absolutely immaculate, like it's just rolled off the production line. They never do any weathering, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They, they want to show their product off and don't want to cover up the detail, I suppose. Anyway, let's have a read of what it says. So, I'll zoom out for this. I'll run a little bit straight. And uh, I just toast my good friend David's health. I hope he's going to be feeling better. And uh, to the rest of you, I wish you a nice evening. And uh, we're enjoying in the UK at the moment some very nice summery weather. It's um, it's not too hot, but it's quite bright, which is nice. I don't like the heat, but this is quite pleasant. Hmm. Oh yes, that's more like it. So then. The Dormier DO-335A file, or arrow, is one of the most unusual fighters of the Third Reich. This multi-purpose aircraft was planned to be the Luftwaffe's next weapon in the skies over Europe. It's okay to start panicking now. <laughs> its most salient characteristic was the tractor and pusher, two propeller combination with twin engines and a cross-shaped tail and forward positioned landing gear and also contributed to its most unique appearance. Like a, again, like a jet, isn't it? The, the layout of the landing a tricycle. It was in the 1920s when Dornier first started researching twin engine layouts. In 1937, they ob did, obtained a design patent searching the twin engine layout uh, to, so that the front and rear engine had a cross shaped tail layout. In 1942, the Air Ministry sent out production demands to various manufacturers for a high-speed aircraft capable of flying at 800 kilometres an hour, 500 miles an hour. Dorney's proposal for a twin propeller aircraft was accepted, and the DO-335 was officially adopted. <coughs> Two 1750 Daimler-Benz 603 engines allowed for a top speed of 760 k's, yet the sleek design ensured manoeuvrability on a par with single prop planes, so you get the best of both worlds. The DO-335 V1 made its maiden flight in October 1943. Ooh, well, it took him so long then. It was followed by a production model in June of 44. Wow, this is worrying. It sounds very early to me, this. 
In September of 1944, engine output was raised to 1800 horsepower for the production version. That's each engine, of course. Each engine, I presume. It doesn't actually make that clear. I think it is. Um, so that gives it 3600 horsepower, which explains why uh, the Tempest I mentioned had about 2600, 2700 horsepower in total, I think, and explains why it was able to romp away from it in the sky. All becomes clear. Both the A0 and the A1 versions had go away. It was fly bugging me. I've tried to eliminate it, but anyway. <laughs> Start again. I had one 30mm can in the Axis nose propeller. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's got a cannon in the nose propeller. That's something I've learned. And two 20mm machine guns over the engine. So it's all right in the middle. The fighter bomber version could carry up to a thousand pounds of bombs. With the intensification of the Allied bombing campaigns, however, strong efforts were made to improve the DO-335. But the end of World War II precluded its development and entry into real combat. So it had quite a long gestation period. I'm sure this was hampered by the bombing of the factories and their, you know, material availability of materiel uh, and, and their ability to make the production. And I suppose because. If you're in the middle of a conflict like that, you are wanting just to get planes out the door because they're being shot down every day, rather than speculative planes that may or may not work. So I suppose it didn't get the priority that it might have done um, if it was pre-war, maybe. Who knows? But I'm surprised that those, those dates are earlier than I expected. Very interesting. Right. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, we've got a little, a little info sheet. Is there any English? Uh, there is no English, it would appear, which, ah, oh, that's a bit of a shame, actually. Now, tell me how you've let us down a little bit there. So what they've actually done is, it's a little technical history sheet talking about uh, various other aircraft, including the 335. It talks about its engine design. See the Daimler-Benz engine there. Uh, and other, other rather unconventional designs. Uh, that was, was that another Dornier? I think it was. Uh, and tail powered gliders and all that kind of thing talks about the development of the uh, the meteor, the jet the jet age coming in here. But it's all in Japanese, so I can't really tell you what it says, unfortunately. Uh, various other aircraft here from the era. I, I really wish they'd put that in English. Couldn't they have done an English sheet for that? Really? Uh, you know, they've they've done the hard work and the easy thing, the translation they didn't bother with. <laughs> then all the research, and it's talking about the um, the Cessna there, the push you pull me Cessna from, I can't remember the number of it, the, the one that was used in Vietnam as a spotter aircraft, that's there as well. Um, I'll see details about the uh, the intakes and things. But nothing to say, because I, I my Japanese, I'm afraid, is not much better than my Spanish, really. That's not great. Um, I, can't, I can't assist there. Disappointing that. Anyway, we'll forgive them, I suppose. Which choice are we? Back to the main instructions. So, let's zoom you in. See what you make of it. £40 this kit, remember? I think it's going to be really rather good value, this is. So, starts off with your uh, option of having your seat with seat belts in it, or you can put the pilot in, install the pilot, put him in his seat, it's got like a headrest and it goes against the rear bulkhead. And you've got your instruments going on there, with the decal for the all the dials and instruments. Then, oops. then you've got the floor, um, you're putting in the, uh, the control yoke stick and then you've got your uh, pedals going in here and then of course the uh, side instruments down the side of the cockpit and then you're installing your pilot and your gun sight uh, and also there's like a, a back bulkhead here. Uh, then you get your bomb bay. Oh, bomb bay. So it carried bombs. Yes, I didn't realise that. It carries a bomb as well. So it's quite a multi role aircraft, this. Bomb bay assembly with the main spar going in here, creating the whole assembly for the bomb bay. And you've got a bomb slightly unusually in four pieces, which is slightly unusual. Um, now, the tooling of this kit, I think it goes back to about late 90s. We'll see in a second. I'll look at it, but we shall see. Does it say on the box? I should have checked that, shouldn't I? What does it say on the box? It's just, sorry, I'm going back out. Let's have a look. Yes, now it actually says on the box uh, 2022, 
Well, obviously we know that's not really true um, in terms of the actual tooling. Uh, it's just this, this iteration, this packaging is 2022. That's all it says. But we shall find out more in a second, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, so you're building up your bomb, as I mentioned, and then you're gonna, that's going to be fitted down here and go into your bomb bay. Uh, along with the, uh, the nose gear bay for the tricycle undercarriage. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of Tamiya's fold-out instructions, it does remind me of Matchbox a bit, but anyway, that's not one of their better features. <laughs> Attaching the rear radiator, so you've got this big rear radiator and this big scoop underneath the, uh, the rear fuselage. Uh, then you're going to bring all this together in terms of the two fuselage halves. Uh, and you cop it, and then you're adding in this nose weight. Now it does tell you, I noticed that there's a, there's a supplementary bit here, so we'll get that out for you. And it says, caution, use Tamiya Clear Multipurpose Cement. Uh, if, fit, if fit to loose, if fit to loose, to loose? I mean loose, I don't know. Something's got lost in translation. I think the Clear Multipurpose is a bit like a, like a resin cement or a, I don't think it's a PVA, I don't know, that'd be strong enough. Um, but it's a weight caution, that's all it is, just, just telling you not to use uh, liquid cement because that really wouldn't work, I don't think, on that nose weight. So that's that. Um, so you put that in here at the nose section, obviously. Um, if you have the Bombay closed, you have to remove the two little lugs, which are the, basically the hinges for the Bombay. Got your exhausts going on the side for the rear engine, and then you're going to attach your front radiator. And it's got like a, it's like a cooling fan. Is that right? A bit like the Focke Wolf 190. And you've got, a, it's got that. You've got a choice here of open flaps or closed flaps for the radiator. That's cool. Now that's good at 148 scale, is it not? That's quite nice. Then you've got your upper fuselage. Rumpf. Now here, Tamiya are being clever of course, they're uh, providing you, to, to avoid a seam line, they're providing you with one big section. Same on the nose where the, uh, the guns are there on the top. And then you've got, on this side, you've got both of your exhausts going into the front and the rear engine. And you've got sort of, uh, like gun muzzle scoops here. Some good detail here, the look of it. And then you've got your right wing and your left wing, and then bringing it all together, adding on your intake. Uh, mouth for the radiator intake of the rear engine, fix your wings on, plus your lights, and your tail planes going in. Okay, back to this side now. So now we're going to get into the gear, starting with the left main gear. Now these have got huge wheels and tyres because it's quite a lot of weight, and it's it's a fairly wide uh, undercarriage. This tricycle undercarriage, very much reminiscent reminiscent of what you see on on jets today, like private jets, that sort of thing. Big meaty chunky undercarriage, you've got all your colours of call outs are there. This is not like border model where you'll have to, you know, guess and spend three weeks doing research so you can build the model. It's all clearly you know, they, they make it absolutely crystal clear for you. And then you've got your nose, uh, nose wheel and gear going in here, complete with all its uh, actuators and uh, retraction arms. And then you've got the underside of the fuselage here, let's go back to it. Underside of the fuselage here with the uh, door flap uh, retraction system and putting in your nose gear there and then over here we're going to decide whether we want to have the bomb bay doors open so you have to cut them in half slightly annoying that you have to do that but tamiyas are normally molded in a way that it's not quite as arduous as it seems uh, but for a more for a, you know more of a beginner that's a bit of a hmm, it's a bit of a challenge i think then you're putting in these, uh, the bomb bay goes in there, either open or shut. You can clearly see there the, what they should look like. Again, good instructions where you see the angles you should get when they're open. And then you're putting in your wheels and your doors, your bomb bay doors, all going in together there, and your, your bay doors. Then at the back we've got um, rear radiator flap exits here, there's three of them. And you've got the front air intake and the rear air intakes going in too. Uh, front propeller, which is a more of a sort of a, a blunty styled one. 
and then the rear propeller is much more of a longer sort of for aerodynamic reasons it's it's a longer less blunt one so that the the drag is reduced so it, the air slips away from it and creates less backwash and then you've got this slightly tricky I suspect you're going to need uh, I think there's a masking set I hope included he says or is there I don't think there is a masking set oh dear really I don't think there's a masking set oh sorry but sorry about this folks um you're going to have to mask that you're going to need a masking set so that's one thing you will have to purchase in addition and then that quite complicated glass house canopy does go on complete with you, you pop it in your front and your rear props that's the real one put your canopy on open or closed that's it so uh, not an overly uh, not an overly complicated build I'd say uh, so far the only disappointment would be lack of a masking set which I thought they could have included you know. I mean, it's not a big job for Tamiya to create that, even if they didn't do it on the original tooling. Uh, that is a little bit of a, a pain. Most of their kits now will have a masking set included. Anyway, there we go. Let's now have a look at the paint guides. You get a lot for your money here at £40, I've got to say, this is fantastic. Airfix, please take note. You know, and others. Uh, Trumpeter. You know, hobby boss, border, etc., etc. Please all take note. Yeah, kinetic. <laughs> anyway, let's not go there. Right. So we've got this lovely, <laughs> lovely colour call-out system here. It's black and white, sadly. So it's not like the modern ones; they're all in glossy colour. But it tells you what you need to know, and it's it's actual size of the model. So this shows you how big the model is actually going to be. And look at it compared to my hand. It's a big old model. This this is this is a lot of value for forty pound. It's a huge thing for. A, you know, it's 48 scale, but it's almost like a 30 second scale Spitfire the size of it. Look at that! It's huge! Really, really good. Anyway, it gives you all the core call outs that you need. And very helpful that they produce that. I think that's excellent. So they've, they've won back a point there. They perhaps clawed back a point that they lost when they didn't bother to give us any uh, English in the historical uh, document, which is a bit disappointing. Then we have got separately now. Uh, we have got our instructions. <laughs> they have a strange way of doing these instructions, don't they, in terms of the shape? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I've built this kit before, and I'll show you in a second. Um, so this is, uh, in fact, I did have it with the Focke Wolf 190, I think. Uh, so this is the Couple Wagon Type 82, um, which obviously was the uh, designed by Ferdinand Porsche and ended up as the Volkswagen Beetle in years later, really, uh, effectively. And uh, it doesn't need much of an introduction, it was the utility vehicle of the German uh, army and all their other forces in World War II. So we've got different options here, you've got um, Eastern Front, uh, JG3 in France, well actually none of these really apply if you're using it with the Dornier 335, but anyway. Uh, I, I think it's odd on the, um, the artwork as well, uh, and the fact that the plastic is... Uh, Almost in like an Italian stroke North African sandy colour. Desert yellow, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure they weren't desert yellow if they'd been used in Germany. Uh, I think they were grey, normally. As is mine, which I'll show you in a second. Anyway, so that, you don't take these too literally is what I'm saying, because it wouldn't really apply if you're putting it with the DR335. Anyway, here we go. So here's the instructions for this. And we have got... It's turning into a bit of a marathon review, this, because there's so much to get through with all the different instructions and things. So you've got uh, the chassis assembly going in there, your little exhaust, you've got your rear seat and your rear deck. Uh, the centre tunnel, it's got the handbrake on it and the gear knob, the gear change there. And then on the other side, fairly straightforward stuff, this. A couple of little holes to drill, 0.8mm, uh, just on the side panels of the, the vehicle. Side panels go in, in go your seats, front seats. Uh, then you've got your sort of uh, rain cover, your roof, your folding roof. It's like a, they have like a, almost like a tarpaulin type roof that folds up and comes up. Um, complete with a little bit of, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get to it in a second, but there's a little bit of uh, sort of tent work wires and uh, struts that hold it up. So you're putting that in and then you're going to put on your rear bumper and your number plate, you've got your instruments and your steering wheel there, bonnet. And then here we've got 
uh, the wheels and tyres going on, which do work quite well, I've got to say. It's a, a joy to build this, I promise you, enjoy this. Really nice one. And then we've got front windshield, uh, we've got the spare, whoops, spare wheel going on. Headlights, of course, it's got these slit type headlights, for, so they can't be seen from above. And then we've got spade tool going on the side, you've got a little bit of uh, detail on the windscreen going in there. And then, as I mentioned, here's your raising and lowering rods for your tarpaulin style tar roof, tonneau roof. And then your doors go on, and then you've got your, your two... Um, your two... Uh, figures, the pilot, and what looks like an officer giving him instructions. And there's a map, and mine's actually got this map, which I'll show you in a second. <laughs> it's real, I've actually got that map. Uh, and then you can have the door open or open or door closed, you've got mirrors going on, and that's kind of it. Um, it doesn't go into a lot of detail about the figures, I thought that was a bit strange. Uh, could have had a bit more there, but I suppose they're fairly self-explanatory, you know. Then, we have got the colour call out that they've done for it. It's just, again, they have the habit of just using one, one sheet of paper. They could have had it half size and printed on both sides, that would have been a bit more... Better for the trees, wouldn't it? But anyway, I'm not criticising. Uh, but a nice colour painting guy, which again, a lot of kits these days do not give you. And then it's recommending here JG3 uh, as the paint call out in France, 43. But again, not actually relevant to the, the Dornier 335 file. So I'll just take that with a pinch of salt. But at the end of the day, I guess you just uh, you paint the figures. Exactly as you prefer to paint them, and uh, whatever you know, theatre of operations, because you can always interact, interchange it, then can't you, with other other aircraft? So I suppose if you did do it in the desert colours, and you've got a desert Messerschmitt one hundred and nine or something, you can just mix and match them, I suppose. I don't think it's that critical. Let's have a look at the decals. First of all, for the aircraft, the timing on this one, I haven't got staples. They've got this rather strange sort of spot weld, which they occasionally do. Oh gosh, it doesn't want to come, does it? That's annoying. You know that mess? It's silly, I think. Yeah, it's like a little spot weld, two little spot welds instead of a staple. That must like they run out of staples, even. <laughs> right, there we go. So look what we got. Now remember, this is not not a new tool, so the chances are they're going to be quite thick. Uh, in fact, yes, there we go, we've got the date. So we, we've got the answer to our question, it's the year 2000. I thought it would be on the day, Carl, somehow. Here we are. <laughs> That's right at the bottom there. There you go. Uh, so they are the thicker generation, yeah, you can kind of feel that. Um, but I, I think they're okay, you know. Uh, and I actually find that these belts, these... Uh, uh, these decal belts, they get they get a bad press, but actually if you do them right and you perhaps do a little bit of weathering, they can look really good. So I wouldn't be too put off by that at all. They can give you a really nice result. And they are very nicely printed, these. Don't think you can have any problems there at all. You've got your instruments. Not a lot of detail in those instruments. That's probably the one let down, if I'm honest. Can you see that? They're not not the most impressive day, uh, instrument panel I've ever seen. I'm going to put that in that way, because that's the way it should have been. And then we've got the Kubel Wagen. And well, I don't think I'm going to bother with that, to be honest, because all it is is number plates, basically. Um, and it's just just lots of different number plates uh, for the different uh, theatres of operation that were mentioned earlier. So let's not waste any time with that. So, let's have a look. So, I was going to start off with what is clearly a weight. Now Tamiya, of course, I don't know if this was originally in the kit, perhaps if any of you built this from the, the first issue, you can tell me. Because um, I didn't, I say I've never had the kit before, I've never had any 335 before. I think I'm going to build this because it's such a good bargain. And uh, it's not that big, it will be a problem in my cabinet. Yes, I'm right, here we are. It's actually steel, I think they're certainly not lead. Oh, you think they made it lead, wouldn't you? But perhaps that's for health and safety reasons. So it's basically... A machined bar of steel that you're going to put in your nose of your 335. That's the one. That's going to be keeping it from being a tail sitter. And if ever you had a model that you don't want to be a tail sitter, this is definitely it because, of course, it's got this uh, twin tail arrangement where you'd be 
sitting on the second tail underneath, which you don't want clearly, because uh, that would not do the aircraft any good at all. Right, I'll pop that in there. But I'll tell you what we'll do with that, just bear with me one second. I'm just gonna stick some of the old sandy on tape on to see the old. But it doesn't come undone. We don't want that, do we? Right. Okay, so let's get into the plastic then. So I'll tell you what, we'll do the um, the Jeep first because we can get that out of the way quickly, can't we? So it comes in one one bag, all the sprues, there's three sprues. There's a clear part sprue with your windshield and then you've got these figures. So we'll do, look at the figures first, I think. I think I'm going to pinch this from over here. Excuse me, one moment. I think we'll just get, just blotting out our, um, our flags a little bit, I'm afraid. Shine a light! <laughs> Oh, we've had one of those moments on live TV again. Well, that was always going to happen, Peter. What were you thinking of? Anyway, not so worry. Sorry about USA and Britain. Got a bit of a... Took a hell of a beating. <laughs> right, let's try it like that. You're right. Is that good? Yes. That's better. Just to get the background right, that's all. I can't believe my man hasn't dropped his map. He always does normally. He's just had a right whack and it didn't bother him at all. Anyway. Listen. It wouldn't be one of my shows unless there was some mishap occurred. Alcohol-induced accidents on par for the course here. <laughs> Cheers, anyway. Good health to you all. Mm. That is a very civilised drink, I have to say. Very grown up. So, let's have a look at our figures. Now, this is what we want. We want some figures with our models, don't we? Many, many of us keep complaining about this, only to, only to be ignored by the likes of Airfix and others. Most of them, in fact, these days. In fact, only Tamiya, really, that I, I, I can think of off the top of my head, are really doing figures on a regular basis, which is a bit disappointing. So here we've got our, and I'm going to show you the actual, the actual finished product next to. So here's the finished product with his map. Yeah, there you got him. Got him in the camera, okay? Yes. And he's reading a map. Um, hold him by his feet. He's bound to drop this map. I'm warning you now. Go away, fly. He's bound to drop this map. It's inevitable. But that's the fig that's the figure you're going to build up. Pilot with his map. Um, One of my better figures, actually, I think at 148, I think I did him okay, didn't I, really? It's come out quite well. So that's him. And this is what he looks like on the sprue. He says, he gets some focus, we can show you. So, here we are on the sprue. So it's got some nice detail. It's got all the, you know, it's got all these... Um, pockets on his trousers, you've got all this uh, belt detail, fantastic parachute belt detail for his parachute, you can see the parachute itself here. A really nice little figure and then you've got the two heads of the two guys here, which again is, is really nice. Um, you've got all the arms are over here and then you've got this is the officer's uh, body here, torso, body. And I'll show the officer now. Here he is, the finished product. That's what he will look like. Well, you might make yours better than mine, I don't know. <laughs> That's what he looks like as the finished man. Better if I move my hand. There we go. That's that. Yeah. So that's what you're getting. Quite a lot, isn't it, really? You know, it's quite a nice. Quite a nice figure, quite decent. Um, so I'll put him over there, so he's talking to the other one, giving him his orders, back to the sprue. So, uh, then you've also got your, your chassis parts, as you can see here. Uh, and this is obviously the, the front uh, bonnet of the car. And you've got all your, it's got a twin exhaust system at the back. Is it twin exhaust? Like a Porsche, isn't it? Or a VW? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then your mirrors over here. Very nice. Really good sprue. No flash, no nonsense at all. And then over here, this is 
quite a big sprue actually, if I just zoom you out, it made it quite large because they've got all the tyres and wheels at one end and then they've got all the rest of the chassis and the bodywork on the other. So let's have a look at these wheels. Let's zoom you in a bit. Let's have a look at that. Look at that. Now these are really nicely moulded, I have to say. And the, these 48 scale Tamiyar vehicles are. They're becoming collector's items and becoming a bit of a must-have, really. I haven't got that many of them. I've only got these additional ones, really. But I'm, I'm going to start doing more of these, because as you can see, I've painted them up quite decent. And I really enjoy doing them. They're quite good fun. They're a nice size as well. They're not too big, you know. They don't take up the cupboard and cause problems. Everything's good. Steering wheel. And then you've got your various bits. You've got the back seat there. Back seat and the rear deck here. You got your front seats here, and you got your chassis underneath, and then you've got the side panels of the vehicle showing its distinctive, quite, quite pointy, darty shapes, almost like a, a World War Two Lotus Esprit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, not quite, but you know what I mean. It's quite pointy and dart shaped, like a. And an 80 supercar. Here's your uh, rear uh, the uh, roof, which is like a tarpaulin really. And here's the mechanism for it. Uh, and then you've got all your uh, various bits of exhaust, back box, and the lights are here. Quite a nice setup. You've got your doors here. Very nice kit, I've got to say. Very nice kit. And then finally, you've got. Oh, I won't bother opening this because it's it's just a, it's purely just the windshield, uh, windscreen, complete with wipers. It's got the wipers on there. So when you build your kit, this is where we get to the big reveal. This is what it should look like, or preferably better, <laughs> um, depending on how skilled a model you are. As long as it looks something vaguely like this, you'll be okay. And that's that's what it comes out. You got your spade on the side. Where was the spade? I missed that actually. There it is. No, I missed that. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Spade, there we are. And yes, sorry, going back to the finished one. Spade on the side, and you've got your uh, your windscreen. Doesn't actually fold down on this one. I don't think it's supposed to. Yeah, it's not like the Jeep, is it? It doesn't fold down, I don't think. Or does it? Maybe I've just glued it. It's probably my fault, I don't know. <laughs> but you can see inside there, you've got your seats, and you've got this. Uh, Tarpaulin type roof with a roof mechanism, very rudimentary sort of framework. You've got your, you see your instruments there, very basic manual gearbox. It's just a utilitarian vehicle, isn't it? Basically, exhaust at the back, it is a twin exhaust, as I said. So that's what it should come out like when you finished it. Um, or, as I say, maybe better. A bit more weathering might have been needed on mine, actually. I could have done a bit more with it, I suppose. But yeah, it's quite a quite a cute little vehicle, it has to be said. So that's the Kubelwagen Type 82. Um, my meagre attempt at it. <laughs> but it gives you an idea of what, how good it is. It's a lovely little kit, no question about that at all. Uh, really, really worth having. So we'll pop that sprue, sprues, back into their bag. Pull that one done. And then we'll get into the Dornier 335. Yeah, for £40 this is turning into quite a big review. Um, and this is what I'm saying, you know, was it somebody said the other day about the, the Trumpeter have re-released their their Lightning 136 scale. I've least said about it, the better as far as I'm concerned. Not one I go for personally. Um, good to see a big lightning, but but you know, these are these manufacturers, they um it was over hundred pounds. No, sorry, that's just ridiculous. Not a good value <coughs> at all. Right, let's start with the big stuff. Let's start with this. Start with the wings, shall we? Well, look at this. Look how big it is. It is. It's like a 30 second scale. It's a bit of a, It's massive. That is a big plane, isn't it? That is really like my almost as big as my Tamiya 30 second scale Spitfire. We've got some lovely panel detail here, really nicely done. All the rivets look good. Nice and sharp relief on them. Unfortunately, you can't pose the ailerons, which always disappoints me a little bit. I think at 48 scale and above, 
you should be able to do that really. You've got your <coughs> excuse me, your nose uh, nose gear here, the gear leg, and the the tire protector, which of course is very much a design that is adopted by people like the the Soviet Union and Russian uh, air forces uh, subsequent to World War Two. Very common to have these sort of uh, it's like a FOD protector mud guard, isn't it? I'm not sure something that we haven't adopted in the West really very much at all, but obviously it was considered perhaps it's because of the rough takeoff conditions on some of these German and Soviet airfields, I don't know. So you've got your obviously got some you see how meaty and large the gear seems. It's massive the the door, isn't it? Look at that. What a nice bit of uh nice bit of uh, injection moulding there. Now there is one or two inject, inject pin marks, there's one there on the inside, but you wouldn't see it would you? On the inside of the uh, the nose gear mud guard, we'll call it, the FOD guard. Um, and we have got it also, again I'm not sure if that's visible or not, but we... Mm. Yeah there are some in the bay door as well, look in the wheel well, look at this, can, I can, get this. can you see them? There's quite a few ejector pin circles there that's a little bit yeah that's a little bit disappointing but again it's 2000 so I guess it was the, the way it was done then you know apart from that I think if you just again I don't, I don't think when they're with a sort of a darker finish and then the very recess I'm not sure you're going to see them but yeah that's the way things were then of course <clears throat> so that's quite a nice sprue apart from those ejector pins to be honest. What a meaty big plane it is for a 48 scale model. It's massive. It's a lot bigger than the ME109. <coughs> so you're getting very good value with it. That's definitely true. Here we've got, sorry, a bit of green screen there. Here we've got our clear parts. Let's have a look at those. Now, this is the one disappointment because, as I mentioned, not the parts themselves, uh, but we haven't got any masking set, and you really need it because there's a lot of uh, framework on these. So. See it? See all the framework there. Looks nice and clear. Can't see. You might be seeing better than me, but I can't see any obvious flaws there really. Looks quite nice. Very very good. And then here, this is the forward part of the windscreen. It's most unusual design, isn't it? Really. Even though even the canopy is unusual. Instead of just having one big bubble canopy, they went in for this glass house work quite a lot. The Germans. But that was because they were not able to form in one piece uh, a bubble canopy in the way that the Americans could with the Mustang, for example, or the Thunderbolt, you know, bubble top later. Uh, I think that the materials and the technology they had just did not allow that at that particular point in time. So that's that one. Very nice parts there. No complaints with the clear parts at all. Then we've got. Oh, oh, we've got a piece off here, that's not a good sign. What's that from? Well, we've got a couple of pieces off, I think. Where's that from? What is that? Is it just a bit of random sprue? It? I'm worried. Panic. What's it off? I need to identify it. Uh, that appears to be from there, I think. Yes, that's, that's the design of sprue anyway. But what is that other piece off? Can't see anything. It's not obvious. It's not obvious, I'm not to say. It's off the other one. I'm having a good little look here. I'm worried, worried, worried. Can't see anything on there. That looks fine. Well, that's odd. That is most odd. It's just not clear. Perhaps it's just a random piece that got into the package and it doesn't look like a part, really. It doesn't look like a part, I think it's just a bit of sprue from the gate. <coughs> Let's have a look at this. So we have here uh, a lot of the sort of spar and the floor of the cockpit area. As you can see here, we've got some of the uh, actuator arms for the gear uh, here. Here's the spar. Um, this is the traditional old sort of Tamiya plastic. Now I've got to say that the, the detail work is really nice. Can you see that? That's uh, your, your instrument panel. Oops. There. That's nice, isn't it? 
Pity about the decal being so crude. The moulding is more impressive than the decal that goes on top of it, so you might want to get an aftermarket instrument set for this one, to be honest. I think I'd be very tempted. Because it sort of undersells the, the model a little bit, I think. Um, it's quite a lot of sort of ghost marks on the, uh, on the gear doors, but they are just in the plastic. They're not, I'm sure they're not on the surface. Can't feel anything. It's fine. Um, ejector pins, well, yes, again, we have got ejector pins. Look. See that? Yeah, one or two there, and those doors that you don't want, see them? There they are. Ouch. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <coughs> and again, on the other side, you can see them as well. Can you see the little scalloping right in the middle here? Right there. there. Yes, so you might want to give that a quick rub of the sandy stick. It doesn't look too deep or anything. They're not, not nasty ones, but yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Then we've got the nose gear bay here. Um, again, there's one or two eject pins. It's of its time, isn't it? It's 2000. I suppose we should expect it. Um, and then we've got the seat, pilot seat there, and the bulkhead it goes on the back of. And then we've got various uh, bits of bulkhead. Here's the radiator, the rear radiator, the big one that sticks down. Well, that's quite cool. Well, that's done. Um, yeah, I mean, apart from the eject pins, again, very, very nice. Uh, and I say, it's a bit of its time. This is the, the cowling at the front, uh, major uh, intake cowling for the radiator and the spinner. And then we've got quite a big old sprue here, which has got the fuselage on it. And it's a massive one, look at that. So it's all built as one piece. You can see that it has indeed got uh, rudder, top and bottom, so it's a huge rudder in effect, it must be very manoeuvrable. Here's that radiator intake I just mentioned. Um, panel lines are nice, very typical Tamiya, nicely cut and very consistent looking. Nothing nothing to really concern us too much there, I don't think. Let you have a close look. Yeah, no great concern, you get your bomb bay door there. And then you've got this very nicely thought out uh, top piece, the top coving, uh, and that's got some nice sort of access hatches in it and uh, panel detail there. That's, that's very cool. And then you've got all these intakes I mentioned, radiator and the, uh, and the engine intakes, air intakes. Here's your Bombay doors. Is that the Bombay door? Yes, I think it is. Mm, or is it the gear doors? Because it seems a bit big. A bit big for the Bombay. No, the Bombay is that one here. So that's part of the gear gear bay door. It's the front main one. Nose gear bay door. <coughs> there's your cannons that go on top, which is nice. And it has the little scalloped, scalloped out parts that we mentioned. It's a nice sprue that. It's really good, you know. Uh, the I mean, the tail detail is really, really exquisite. Look at that. All the panel lines, all the rivets are visible. They've done the actual rudder really well. Again, not poseable sadly, but, but you know, it's £40. I mean, you get a lot of kit for £40, really. <coughs> There's plenty there. Don't think we can complain, not when you're getting a vehicle in and thrown in as well for the money. I mean, you consider what kit, kits are costing us now. It's really starting to bite, isn't it? The way that things have sort of increased in the inflation right across the globe, not just in the UK. Um, so I think that shouldn't moan too much. There's two poly caps in the bag there, that's for the props from the rear, of course. Pop that back in there, and I'll put the road piece of plastic in just in case. I'm pretty sure it's not a pop up, but it's a road bit of sprue that has gone a, a bit able. And then, last but not least, we've got the two smaller ones. So let's have a look what we've got in here. Oh, we've got the pilot figure. Let's have a look at him now then. So this is a year 2000 Tamiyar pilot. Let's, let's have a look what they've managed to do. It is the best part of a quarter of a century ago nearly. Let's have a look. Well, it's not too bad, to be honest. Ah, oh, we've seen much worse from Airfix and others. And many others. Yeah, so he's a little bit softly moulded. But I think that's nice to have a pilot like that. You paint him up nicely. I think you're going to get some really nice results. Um, you know, he's got a good figure on his face. He's got all the straps and 
the helmet and the goggles, all there. Nicely detailed. Adequate, especially the price. And then we've got our exhaust stubs here. Uh, and it's not, you know, again, it's not it's not a slide moulded. I'm going to try and get that closer for you. It's not a slide moulded stubs, unfortunately, like they would be today. You know, hollowed out. They're not like that, unfortunately. And then you've got your really meaty tyres and wheels, which are huge on this aircraft. And there's the front one. The front one is like the size of a rear one, almost, you know. Uh, main, main gear on, on most aircraft. But it's really giant uh, gear. Plus you've got your bomb. Oh, and I've just realised, I didn't, I didn't realise, this is actually a twin. I said there were two sprues. It's actually one sprue that's duplicated. It's the same twice because we've got another pilot here, pilot here. So they're actually, um, yeah, there's two uh, twin sprues, twin set of sprues. Hence the bomb parts. So you, get, you actually get two pilots, so you actually get four figures in total in this set, not three, as it says on the box. You get Now that's useful, isn't it? Hang on a second. Let's just think about this, guys. <clears throat> so when you buy this kit, you get a free 48 scale pilot, which could almost be used in other kits, which is worth thinking about. That is a bonus, which I didn't know about, so that's very good, very good indeed. And then lastly, We've got the sprue that's got propellers on it, which are a very important part of this aeroplane, of course, because it's got two of them. Push you, pull me, uh, tractor arrangement. Okay, I think this is going to get a good review. <laughs> now I've seen the, the extra pilot, that's kind of, I've forgiven them for that lack of English writing on their historical document. I'm going to just gloss over that at the end. <laughs> Hey, now look at this. Ah, oh, this is lovely. You've got two uh, propellers. It's look the same design. Uh, obviously the pitching is different. It's because one's pitching forward and one's pitching backwards. One's a blower. Yeah, you can see that actually in the way that if you look at the angle of the props relative to the to the boss, they're like back to front. You see that? Well, that's really nicely moulded. Excellent props. Really like those, and then look at the spinners. And this has got the this is the front one, which is blunter and has got the cannon firing through it. Hence the uh, the open hole orifice. Oh, where? And the back one, which is much more aerodynamic and pointy, to reduce drag, like a long tail car. Yeah, see the difference? Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. And then you've got your, your cowls, you've got this option of the uh, closed or the open uh, doors on the cowl, that's the engine at the front. Uh, and then we've got a couple of aerials over here, um, and then just uh, one or two uh, of the parts just behind the, the cowl in front of the engine. You don't get an engine as such in it, unfortunately. That's the only thing that, you know, that could have been better on the kit really, but that would have cost a lot more money. As we know from the Kotari Spitfire uh, scenario, <laughs> uh, which is why they didn't put an engine in, I think. Either that or they couldn't get hold of the intellectual property that they used to have when they were under another ownership, shall we say. We won't go into that today. So, well, I hope you've enjoyed that because I, I thought it was going to be a good kit. I used to be a good kit. But it's better than I expected, if I'm honest. For the money, I actually paid £39. It wouldn't be fair to say where I got it from, but I paid, delivered, including postage, it was £39.90, I think it was, top of my head. It was under £40, delivered. Postage was free in this particular case. Um, but even if you pay that plus postage, it's still an absolute bargain, to be quite honest. What a lovely kit. And then you, you've seen the, the finished version over there. So what's this going to get out of 10? I think to give it 10 would be a little bit, perhaps a little bit over the top, but it's so close for the money. When we consider kit ratings, and you know, I know a lot of other models don't give a rating like I do, and it is very subjective, I know, and it varies for various reasons, but you have to, the biggest thing is the quality, it's the instructions, is it, is it easy to understand? I just want to say a word about this before I come to my conclusion, I just thought of something. I recently saw somebody who had built um, Kinetic Sea Harrier FRS-1 
uh, and, a, and a good, clearly a very skilled and good builder indeed. So I'm just going to swap back to my normal glasses. Yeah, this chap was an excellent builder, clearly. Um, and also, uh, I was in a live chat a, a week or two ago and somebody said, there's nothing wrong with the FRS ones from Kinetic, don't know what the fuss is about. And another commenter said, I built it, it was no problem. Well, let's see them then. <laughs> what I mean by that is not, I built better than you, I'm not saying that at all. I would never dream to talk to such nonsense because I see people better than me all the time. But what I mean is, did you actually build it correctly? Because if you followed the instructions from the manufacturer with that kit, you didn't build it correctly, I can assure you. And sure enough, this recent video that came out, which has got many, many views, more than I got, uh, of somebody doing a build, and it's a really good video, I've got to say. Uh, go watch it, it's fine. Um, a skilled builder, well filmed and really nicely done. But is that, you see, Harry, it's not correct. In, I'm not going to go into it, it wouldn't be fair. But there are so many areas on that model, the finished model, that he's got wrong. And I don't blame him at all. I do not blame the modeller, it's not his fault. It, I go back to my original comments and I stand by every word of my rant. The instructions are such garbage, they will make you build the model wrong and 9 out of 10 of those kits are built wrong. 9 out of 10 builds I see the FRS1 from Kinetic are wrong. The antennas are in the wrong places or they're missing or they're all over the place. You need to study, if you want to build one of those you're going to have to study it and study it and study it and this is the problem. Now enough of that, coming back to this. This is the problem. So when I give a rating, I think I said with the Kinetic C, Harry, I gave it 4 out of 10 in the end. I think I wrote in the comments. After all things are considered, the price, which is high in that case, what was that, £75? This is £40! Come on! Which do you think is better value before you even open the box? And then when you open the box, it just confirms it. I mean, this is, you know, if this was £80, if that was £80, that would still be a better kit than the Kinetic C, Harry, by miles. So we, we know we're onto a winner with this one. But don't judge things superficially. Do you really know what you are talking about? And of course, and I say this all the time, <laughs> I'm giving these comments, I'm doing an inbox review like many of us do. Until you've actually built it, that's when you really know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, and another very experienced and well-known modeler um, told me that there was no problem with the Sea Harrier. Because uh, he built the FA2, which he's not got the same instructions. 90% of the instructions are completely different and, and better. I've seen them. They're much better. They're not the same at all. Uh, apart from the first page. After that, it goes off on a different journey altogether. Clearly, that, that, that you know, I've said it in my rant, but clearly they made major modifications. But you only know how good something is at the end, really, when you built it. Uh, and I can rec So I can recommend this Kugelwagen, because I have built that, as you see. That's definitely a 10 out of 10. Um, and I think overall, you know, there's, there's a few ejector pin marks which hurt it a little bit. They didn't bother to do the translation. But I still stand by what I'm going to say, which is I'm going to give this 9.5 out of 10. For f under £40, you show me a kit under £40 that is better value than that. No. You've got two kits in one. You've got four figures. Nothing comes close for under £40 at the moment. That's a fantastic value. And I actually saw the price and I thought, is that right? That sounds like they underpriced it. And that was before I fully appreciated how big it was. So I say to everybody, I highly commend that kit. And I'm sure that I would highly commend the others that they've done. Uh, I mean, I can, I can certainly commend to you the BF109 G6 combo, same price. Given that it's got that kit that I've already just endorsed, the Kubelwagen. And I certainly have gave it, I gave it 10 out of 10, didn't I, on the... Uh, did he get 10 out of 10 or 9.5? I certainly gave it, uh, let's, let's just say 10 out of 10, on the, uh, the BF109 G6. That's a great combo, great combo. And that doesn't suffer from ejector pins in the way that this has done, because it's a very new tool, 2018 kit, so you can fill your boots with that one. If Don't, don't even hesitate, you know. I'm almost tempted to go and buy that, actually, again, for £40. Mm. Anyway, put it in the st <laughs> Like I need more kits. And then you've got the, the Mustang I mentioned, uh, the P51 that comes with a little Willis Jeep. Another great kit, you know. They make such lovely kits at 48 scale Tamiya, even the, you know, they do date back to the turn of the century. But they're just fantastic quality and they, they fall together. I'm sure this will be the same. And then finally there's that um, Japanese um, Kawasaki Hyen with the little truck, I can't remember the name of it, the little uh, utility truck, similar sort of thing with figure. 
Great, I'm tempted to get that because it's something else I've never had before. I might get one of those as well. Mm. But I think I'm going to build this. I'm not pulling your leg. I think I'll build that. Um, you can't have too many Kubel bargains knocking around in my, my big diorama. I've got loads of 148 scale German stuff. Uh, Luftwaffe, World War II, I mean. So, nine and a half out of ten. Very close to ten out of ten. I've got to be honest, it works for those ejector pins uh, and the bit slightly lazy thing they did with the. Uh, <laughs> with the uh, the technical historical sheet, it would have been 10 out of 10. That's how good it is. What a lovely kit. What a really smashing kit. Go and buy that one. I would hurry as well because they have a nasty habit in uh, Tamiya. They issue these things and then they just drop it after about six months and they don't, they don't do another production run for about five, ten years. So I, I would hurry. If you can pick this up under £40, I think you should definitely stick one of these in your stash or any of them in that series I've just mentioned. You will not regret it at all, and there's no way you're going to think, oh, I wish I hadn't bought that now. Not when you open the box, you're going to think they're wonderful. So there you go. Full endorsement from me, 9.5 out of 10. I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up, a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, please don't remember to ding the notification bell, because that's what... We'll give you early warning. We've had a few people having problems with that. I think it's a YouTube problem, actually, because I know that I've had a problem with it as well, with other people's videos. But uh, It's always worth just re-dinging the notification bell. Just unding it and then ding it again. Notify me. Um, as well as the subscribe button. Um, now, I have got some news um, coming up very, very soon. I think I'll not, not say, tell you about it today. But, but something very interesting has occurred. Um, my, my videos have been seen by... Uh, a major manufacturer, shall we say, international manufacturer of kits. Uh, I have not approached them at all. They have approached me and asked if I will review some of their kits for them, which is a real um, honour, frankly, especially for this particular company. I'll explain why when I when I pop up with the video. Uh, you will be uh, you'll be impressed that they were willing and able to do this, uh, and that they approached little old me, you know, sitting in his garage quite frankly <laughs> doing reviews um, I am very honored that I've been offered this opportunity I will tell you more in the in the first video which will be coming pretty soon I think and hopefully in the next couple of weeks um, there are some technical difficulties with supplying the kits to me at the moment and I won't go into the details right now I'll tell you when I do the, the first video um, but they're on the way they're going to be very impressive kits and uh, a very worthy supplier that, uh, I, and by the way, they're not paying me, I'm not being endorsed or sponsored or anything, but I, they are supplying the kits. And what I will do is I'll probably, many of the kits that will be supplied will probably be uh, eBayed uh, for uh, charity auction purposes. Uh, so I hope I can also get you into perhaps some um, supporting charities and things like that by. And once you've seen these kits, I think you'll be quite impressed by them, most of them certainly. And I think hopefully one or two of my subscribers might bid on them and we can raise some money for charity as well as have some fun and get some new kits. And these will be new models, um, you know, it's not old stuff. Um, so anyway, watch this space. I don't want to say too much today. Watch this space. Um, I'll be starting this new venture sometime probably mid-late June. And I look forward to it very much, and um, I'm very grateful to have been uh, offered the opportunity. It's, uh, it's fantastic, really. So, something exciting and new is coming up, so please stay tuned to my channel. Wonderful that you all tune in and watch these videos. Uh, I know I've had a bit of a break, two or three weeks, but uh, I think my health was giving me a few problems, and we needed to just have a, a little bit of a rest, and it seems to have worked. You'll all notice that I'm back on form, hopefully. Touch one, you'll think that, you might not think it. I think I'm just back on the button. <laughs> Thank you all very much for tuning in. Really appreciate your company. Until next time then, keep tuned, keep tuned, stay tuned, because we'll have this exciting new, a whole new world of models that's coming up, um, things for you to see. There will, all, there will all be new cutting edge models, and I think you'll find it very, very interesting indeed. So thank you all for your patronage and for watching. Um, please keep the comments coming. I read every comment. Many of them, um, if they sort of, uh, if they uh, stir my imagination or require an answer, or you know, by all means, ask me questions if you want to. People do it all the time. Don't hesitate. Uh, everything gets read. I promise you, every single comment is read. 
um, unless sometimes when they're older, when it's a few months, I don't get notifications. And I think this is a pro again a problem with YouTube. When it gets a bit older, I don't seem to get told. You know, that YouTube stops bothering to tell me. But certainly within a week or two of the video going out, I, I see the comments and I'll I'll usually respond one way or another. And uh, the vast majority of the comments are fascinating, really. And get some <laughs> a lot of people have very similar experiences that I talk about. And they have uh, a lot of pleasure, I think, between us, me talking and you watching, and uh, it's just nice to see interesting new things. So there you go. So we've got an absolute winner from Tamiya there, a whole a series of four winners. Recommend those to you very strongly indeed. Go, go and get some of those and enjoy them. It's something to build for the winter, perhaps, you know. I must admit, I, I find my mojo in the summer. It, it does go a bit flat for building, but my enthusiasm for models is as strong as ever. But I do find it hard to motivate myself when it's nice outside, you know, to actually be sitting in here doing model building. A bit tricky, a bit tricky. I have started my tack on Sea Wolf and Sea Dart missile system from the Falklands. It's well underway. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of an update video on that, a short one, perhaps 20 minutes or something. Coming soon. So, stay tuned, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Please look after yourselves. Stay healthy, stay safe. Get well soon, David. Hope you're feeling okay and going to be on the mend. Fingers crossed, mate. Drink to your health, sir, and to all my subscribers, look after yourselves. See you all very soon. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.